Welcome and thanks for joining us uh, today for uh, for Workday Chats. We're thrilled and excited that you're able to uh, to spend some time with us today. My name is Greg Pryor, and for the last six years, I have had the incredible privilege and pleasure to help look after talent, leadership, and culture uh, at Workday. Uh, uh, waking up every morning, uh, ideally uh, uh, spending some time and effort to ensure that our nearly 12,000 workmates around the world are having a remarkable uh, Workday experience. We'll talk uh, more about that today. If you do have any uh, questions, please feel free to share them uh, in, in the comments uh, in the comments box. We'd be happy to, uh, to, uh, to take a look at those. Um, in this spotlight, I could not be more excited. One of my most favorite topics, and so I'll have to keep my, my energy a bit boxed in here because uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we now see that given the collaborative intensity of work that we all experience, that uh, collaboration, the way we work with others, the way we build trust, the way we you know, create supportive relationship is becoming increasingly critical. And that uh, is, uh, has some additional challenges relative to multiple generations in the workplace. And today, most workplaces actually have five, up to five generations in today's, uh, uh, in today's workplace. And so we really thought it would be fun to, to take some time today to explore this topic and really understand what are some of the similarities and maybe what are some of the differences uh, of having you know, different generations in the workplace today. Uh, before we begin, I'd love to share maybe just a quick uh, a personal perspective. Uh, it's my personal belief that we are about uh, 10 years into the third age of human capital management. That uh, in general from the 1930s to the 1970s was the age of personnel. Uh, there was a particular tone, tenor, and a type of technology uh, during that age of human capital management. I do think from the sort of 1930s to the 1970s, was the age of HR. Uh, again, a certain way that work was conducted, the way that sort of people engaged in that work. And I think about 10 years ago, we entered into this third age of human capital management. That's really around how we enable people and performance uh, in, uh, in our organizations. Um, uh, there are a number of factors, and I promised my workmates that I would not geek out on all of these and, uh, and bore you with all the research on this. But I do think one of the factors, at least that I see in the research, and I uh, spend time with various academic leaders are, is we definitely are seeing some differences relative to uh, expectations, diverse and unique expectations of workforce. Some that break down across generations, some that break down across gender, and we thought it would be important to, uh, to take some time and, and explore those, uh, which is really what I'd love to uh, do today. Let me also say that at least at Workday, uh, diversity and uniqueness is absolutely something that we're incredibly intentional about. Uh, we believe that each person has their own unique perspective, and so we're gonna be doing everything we can today to not fall into the trap of broad generalization <laughs> And so I'm going to I'm going to allow my panelists here to be unburdened, feeling like you need to represent your entire uh, generation here. But we thought it would be interesting uh, to tap into some of your experiences relative to maybe you know the time you've had in the workforce and uh, and some of your perspectives. So I am thrilled. I'm going to actually introduce our panel. Uh, we've uh, brought together four of my most favorite and interesting workmates to uh, to join us today. I'm going to begin with uh, Grace Story is here. Uh, Grace happened to be uh, part of our Gen Z, our digital native generation, relatively new workmate, uh, and we're thrilled to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Zach Boy uh, uh, is going to be, uh, uh, happens to be uh, part of our millennial generation, and I won't ask you to, again, feel like you need to respond Great. and protect <laughs> and safeguard and uh, for an entire generation. <laughs> But, but love to hear your perspectives uh, as a millennial. Uh, my good friend, uh, Chevette Swayze, uh, is joining us. Chevette and I share the uh, uh, opportunity to be part of our Gen X yeah. generation, and thank you for joining us today. And last but not least, my good friend, Mike Franzen. Uh, Mike happens to be part of our baby boomer generation and uh, is gonna talk a little bit about some of his experiences today. So thank you, yeah, thanks panelists thanks. for joining us. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you for having us. So with that, let's uh, yeah, let's get let's get into it. I'd uh, love to start the conversation by understanding what's important to you uh, as individuals, and and then we can talk about you know to the degree that sort of uh, projects across. Uh, again, while we are individuals, we do see some patterns in the research around what people's expectations are, and and let's explore that. Grace, uh, I'm actually going to uh, uh, start with you. No, I'm actually going to start with I'm going to start with Chevette. Uh, what's important to you? What are those non-negotiables when you think about uh, the workplace and specifically what you're looking for in a job? 
What's important to you? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I'd say that the most important thing to me when I'm considering a job um, and considering an organization is what is their culture like? Culture. <clears throat> um, and how is that culture represented through their values? Because it's really important that my own personal values don't conflict with the organizations and vice versa. Um, I like to go into the office every day feeling comfortable, feeling supported, and feeling like um, I know that the decisions that are being made align with how I might make decisions as well. Um, and so that is usually reflective of an organization's culture or through an organization's culture. So um, that could mean anything. It could mean the way in which I engage with my manager and how my, my manager works with our, our team. It could be decisions that are made from, you know, from leadership above. Uh, if I know that the, the culture and the values of, of that organization are aligned with my own, I have a sense of pride of coming into, coming to work every day and knowing that, uh, that I can feel good about the company that I work for. Oh, fantastic. So culture and values. Well, we'll talk a little bit, obviously, something that's very important to all of us here at Workday. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Excellent. Yeah. No, thanks for sharing. Zach, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a sim similar yeah. question. What are some of those non-negotiables? What are you looking for? Yeah, uh, yeah. Similarly, I, I think culture is the big one for me. Uh, and that shows in a lot of ways, like you mentioned, but ultimately it's do the people respect each other? Uh, do the leaders treat people as people and not just numbers in a spreadsheet? Uh, do they mean what they say? Do they say what they mean? And then for me, it's like, can I be myself? Can others be themselves? Can everyone be authentic and have that sense of belonging in the workplace? I think if that sort of embodies the culture to me. Uh, the other two things are the potential growth I might have at that company. So I don't need, I don't need to learn something new every single day. But if I have new challenges thrown at me, I think that's really exciting. Uh, and I think part of, I should say, outside of the situations themselves, <clears throat> I think it's really important to be in a place where there are mentors and sponsors to, you know, people that I know have my back if I need that. Uh, and then lastly, it's total compensation, right? So that, that could be money and also benefits, but yeah, food on the table, can I pay my bills, can I pay down some debt, that sort of thing. No, great. I, I appreciate that. It's interesting. We actually, uh, uh, there is some interesting research specifically related to our millennial uh, population that because you all sort of entered the workforce during the Great Recession around the world, that pressure of uh, keep maintaining relevance, of mm -hmm. continuing to build skills. We look at other things like the half-life of skills, new skills uh, mm -hmm. coming into the workplace, particularly your generation. Uh, at least as I've talked to folks at our company and around the world, uh, that really is a, is a critical important. How do I continue to feel like I'm progressing, building new skills? Uh, and then I become compensated for those right. two as well. Yeah, right. both in. Yeah, both are true. Great. Thanks, Zach. Um, Grace, let me, uh, let me actually turn to you. Tell me a little bit about, if you would, what inspires you uh, to come to work uh, uh, every day? Well, there's actually a lot of different things in the workplace that inspire me daily. And some of the ones that really come to mind, I think, first, are the people that I work with. I feel so lucky to be able to work alongside such smart people who are so incredibly talented at what they do and have the opportunity to learn and grow from them every single day. And then additionally, just my role here at Workday, I think I have high visibility into the impact of the work that my team's doing. Since I'm able to be on the content team, I'm able to see all of the work that goes into creating our programs and resources for our workmates. And then on the flip side, I'm also able to be helping support in the classroom, really seeing um, how our workmates are responding to the material that we're presenting with them and just seeing how energized and excited they are about the opportunities that we're providing them. And that just really keeps me really inspired, inspired on the daily basis. It, yeah. Yeah. So seeing that impact, seeing folks like yeah. Zach continue to build their skills and capabilities and yeah. sort of a virtuous cycle. Mike, I'm, I'm going to ask you the, the same, similar question, sort of what, what inspires you uh, uh, to come to work every day and uh, in, in today's workplace? I just to echo everything that our panel said, I, I agree with all those things, you know, um, culture and values are really critical for me. The only thing that I think I would add is um, just being able to work on um, tasks and projects that feel meaningful, you know, feeling like you're building something that's going to make a difference, you know, for your customers and for society, that's really important for me. And I think someone mentioned respect. You always want to feel like, you know, what you're doing is garnering the respect of your, you know, your partners, your um, your peers, your customers. So th th I'd add that to what we've already talked about. Yeah, no, that's great. And I know what we see in some of the research is particularly our millennials and, and even increasingly so our Gen Zs, having that sense of purpose at work, being mm -hmm. able to connect to that, seeing, but it's also 
cross generation, right? That's right? I mean, you know, and you've been a great part of this company helping enable the work days of 40 million users now mm -hmm. uh, who use Workday very technology. Cool, That's huh? got to yeah. feel, yeah, mm -hmm. feel very cool. Fantastic. Good. Mike, I'm going to uh, put you on the spot uh, as well. Again, are there things in the workplace today that detract from your experience? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about this, I guess the two that kind of come to mind for me. Um, one that troubles me is uh, workplace competition. You know, as we get bigger, um, we spread out mm -hmm. between buildings and cities and people don't know each other and they don't always um, expect the best. You know, like I, I, I have to do this myself because I can't trust this other mm -hmm. group to do it instead of, you know, mm -hmm. really um, breaking down those barriers, talking to people, getting to know them, trusting that they're going to do, you know, what they need to do. So I'm a huge fan of, you know, saving your competitive energy for the companies outside of your organization. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I think, I think the other thing is um, just really um, getting a handle on all the different um, interruptions and um, information that, you know, bombards us every day. We get a ton of stuff that's sent to us as if it's urgent and um, it's not important. And, you know, it kind of starts to take away from the stuff that is important. And so making sure that the company's focused on that, um, bringing us... Um, technologies and uh, processes that help us sort of um, segment some of that non-important but urgent stuff away so that we can focus on what's important. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. We see in, in, in quite a bit of the research is the, is the collaborative intensity of work really continues to explode. Mm -hmm. Our connection, the importance of working together, we see this interesting phenomenon of, of collaborative overload. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, feeling overwhelmed, feeling mm -hmm. a sense of, you know, uh, and there's some really good and interesting uh, research by uh, Professor Rob Cross on that as it relates to, to overload. So how we think about using technology, how we think about being intentional and not mm -hmm. being overloads uh, important. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll double click a little bit into work style uh, and the way people actually, Grace, I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin with you. Do you feel that you approach work differently than perhaps other generations in the workplace? Well, I think in general, there are a lot of similarities in the way that I approach work to other generations in the workplace, and I found that through my experiences here at Workday. But I think the one that I've really noticed that I may approach a little bit differently is how I you leverage technology to problem solve. So I think since I'm the first generation to really grow up in full technology, mm -hmm. it's all that I've known. And it's a resource that I know is always there and will always have an answer to me for me. So I think that when I'm tasked with a question or a problem, the first stop is usually for me to go and look it up or see if there's a how-to video to kind of find the answer to that problem. And then maybe I'll reach out to my network to see if someone can help me. But I think that's a little bit different than some of the other generations. Yeah, and I know as we were prepping for this we had a similar conversation where perhaps uh, uh, I'll, I'll speak for myself you know I will go f phone a friend I'll ask yeah, someone yeah. I'll turn to Mike usually <laughs> who sits next to me and which I know you haven't been coming in as frequently lately <laughs> me, I think. but whereas you know when I think about it, I've got two uh, college-aged daughters gosh they have already found the answer to a question on technology while I'm still formulating the question and who I'm going to ask and so maybe maybe that's a difference relative to a digital native uh, generation I definitely yeah agree with yeah that. Great. Um, let me ask you, Shvet, I mean, uh, differences uh, that you see perhaps uh, uh, from peers of different generations in the workplace? Yeah, so um, I think that um, in terms of how the generations work, the one thing that I, and, and it's also something that I'm very inspired by, is that um, the millennial and Gen Z generation tend to bring their full selves to work, yeah. um, which I think is very different from my own generation where, you know, we, we were kind of taught, you know, you are one person or one thing or you are an experience at home and then you are something else at work. Yeah. Um, and um, so I have been fully inspired because now I just bring my full self because of the younger generations. They come in, they are exactly who they are. They um, are unapologetic about it. And what's so amazing about that is we get to see the full gift and the full breadth of a person. Um, and they get to bring all of that into the work that they do. As a result of that, now I get to experience that. And I think that that really rubs off, right? And yeah. it really resonates um, in the sense that now it's like I don't have to think about, oh, I can be this way at work and be this way at home. I can be the exact same person. Um, and oftentimes I think that that bridges a gap in conversation and mm. experience, in um, how we perceive each other and how we relate to each other, uh, if we're all able to bring our full selves to work. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I know 
uh, Zach, we recently had something called Vibe Week here, which is how we value yes. inclusion, belonging, and equity. And you were kind enough to actually oh yeah. get on stage. You are uh, not only an amazing technologist, but, but quite a writer and a poet. Uh, uh, yes. And you got on stage and shared some of your poetry, some of your writing. And I think, to, to, you know, to your point, seeing that full self of you hey you know your role is as a, an amazing technologist and you are an amazing technologist but gosh the full breadth of yes. of who you are being your authentic self and feeling like you can bring that to work yeah thanks thanks yeah. for bringing that up yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll play that in a few yeah. minutes okay. yeah. stay tuned Zach, it's coming back reading his poetry yeah uh, well. and you're here in cool san francisco right you actually do poetry readings Pretty frequently. Now I'm really, now I'm totally yeah, off script, yeah, by just, the way. You can but. keep going if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's All awesome. right, let me get back, let me get back on, on, on script here. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, Zach, do you, do you find that there are more maybe similarities or differences when you think about engaging different generations in the workforce? Yeah, well, I, I think piggybacking on your point, it's that everybody certainly has differences. And mm -hmm. I think, yes, if you cut by generation, there will be differences. But even within a generation, there's a full spectrum mm -hmm. of passions and perspectives and behaviors and egos and communication styles and all sorts of other things, right? So I think maybe everybody brings their differences, but in the melting pot of work, like yeah. I think it becomes some sort of um, hybrid. And then mm -hmm. for me, it's like there's more similarities. Mm -hmm. So I manage mm -hmm. teams where there's four different generations. Yeah, And yeah. so not not everybody was drafted for a war. Not everybody was there when MTV launched. Like obviously there are, there are core differences in our upbringing and the way that we were yeah. forged. Um, but I think generally speaking, like we're all people at our yeah. core yeah. and we want to feel some connection in some way. That might be connection to our work, that might be connection to our coworkers, or it might be connection to, <laughs> You know, talking about the bachelor at the water cooler every day, like with, with people, like it's it, whatever they're whatever they're trying to connect to. I think they're looking for it in some place, and so for me, like the similarities are that they do that in their own way, but they're all they're all chasing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting from a research perspective. You talk about uh, um, uh, Tammy er Erickson, who's at the London Business School, has done some really fascinating research, really talking about, as you said, sort of how you were forged, what was happening, and. There is some, and, and I won't geek out too much, but there is some fascinating research that the formative years by which we grew up, typically sort of between age 12 and 18, whatever was happening in the world around us, conversations at the dinner table, whatever was on the, the TV, what right, was right. happening, that that actually does sort of shape a bit of the psychological narrative by which we process the world. Mm -hmm. And so we do come, and, and, and you know, from different perspectives, and then obviously that becomes more interesting from a, a global perspective and a geographic perspective. But there is some, uh, I think, some interesting that context we grew up in, what our early work yeah. experiences were, where it was do not bring your whole self to work, yes. like leave your, leave your home <laughs> self at home, yes. bring your... And then it is wonderful to see as we've had different generations have different context, different experience that we're able to uh, to learn and grow there. Also impacts the music you like, right? It does impact, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you remember your youth. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I am uh, uh, on the Pandora's eighty channel still. I'm still <laughs> living back in that back in those formative yeah. years. Well, what's interesting is we we had our teams. Uh, submit five songs that they liked each. So every person had five songs. We put it all into a big playlist and nice. we didn't say who added which song. Mm -hmm. And it was surprising. It wasn't what you think. Yeah. A lot of like the classic classic rock lovers were like 24. Well, right? I'm like, uh, Greg, I have two uh, millennial daughters and they like classic rock a lot. So yeah. Yeah. probably influenced by you. Probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> Although it does break my heart when they call it classic rock. And I'm like, no, I was actually there when it was just rock. It was contemporary. It was popular. That's right. You know, at the time, now it's classic, yeah. Grace, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot on this one. Uh, similarities and differences, you know, as you think about um, uh, your day-to-day -day activities, your interactions with others. Uh, any similarities or differences? Yeah, I think I'm gonna echo off what Zach said, just that there are a lot more similarities in the workplace. And I think day-to-day, -day, a lot of the work that we do, I th don't see that many differences between the people that I work with, and I know we're all coming from different generations. And I think that we have a really special place here because we do value and appreciate the different perspectives being brought into the workplace. And I think just the way that our work's set up is we're all in an open environment, so it makes it easy to collaborate with the people that you're working with. We're all right there next to each other. And then another thing I think that makes it easy is here we have so many different formats for technology yeah. as ways to communicate and collaborate with each other. And there's not one that's like the best method to use, so everyone is able to really pick their medium that's their favorite. And we are all able to collaborate together using those. 
So I think it's nice to have that. Yeah, that's great. I think especially at Workday, us having a completely open office mm -hmm. office space allows us to see and, and be much more of a melting pot that I think it was mm -hmm. Zach who was talking about earlier. Mike, let me let me ask you, you, you talked a little bit about technology earlier, right? How do you continue to manage the, the collaborative intensity of work? Um, are, are there certain technology formats that you find work better for you or any observations as it relates to, you know, multiple generations of technology in the workplace? So just to, you know, I think uh, echo what, what uh, Grace said, the tools that we have, they just keep getting better and better. And I think as they get better, um, it helps you to um, have more freedom and efficiency at work. And the one that comes to mind for me is just how good um, video conferencing has, has mm -hmm. become in the last, really just the last two or three years. I mean, there was always something there, but um, mm -hmm. now, you know, you can be, I've been in meetings where you know, there's five or six people in the um, meeting and you just feel like you're right there with them. We have, uh, you know, large group meetings where sometimes there'll be 30 or 40 people and the technology, you know, didn't used to hold up and now it does. You don't have any blips, you just, you're, you, you expect it to work. Um, I love um, group where products where you can get on and have, a, you know, an immediate dialogue. I think the, the key is just to make sure that um, as an organization, you sort of agree on, okay, this tool is for this and this tool is yeah. for this because you have a tendency to sometimes have your favorite tool and want to use that for everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not always appropriate to, to use like a group or tool to document designs, um, you, you know, or to uh, uh, use email to have a discussion because it's just too hard to go, you know, back and forth. So keeping that in mind, I think is critical. Yeah, yeah, and one of the things I really appreciate, at least at Workday, and, and we've been really intentional, is using, turning your video on. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, it's so funny when, mm -hmm. I, you know, when, when we uh, communicate with our workmates, you know, everyone turns their video on, and then I'll, I'll talk to some of our customers or outside people, and almost no one turns their video on, and there is some really interesting research about the importance of being able to see people's mm -hmm. faces mm -hmm. that literally our brains uh, we look for the social cues we look for really seeing mm -hmm. the nonverbals, and that is increasingly important when we, when we want to build trust mm -hmm. and get to know people and so with keeping that balance slack other technologies mm -hmm. are, are, are good and important and allow us to collaborate but we have to realize we have to stay tuned to the interpersonal interactions of literally being able to uh, you know see someone yeah. across the table and, and understand and, and feel a sense of hey I, I know that person. I know yeah. what's true for them. And I, I totally agree. If you have a meeting like that, compared to having a phone call, you just felt mm -hmm. like you were right there with the person. Right? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem that much different than if you went and you know met with them in person. I mean, there's. I always think there's no substitute for that. But the difference between video and meeting with a person that's really shrunk. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. and connecting people. Zach, you are a great collaborator. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the badge for that. Absolutely. In my interactions. How do you think about collaborating uh, efficiently and effectively with your team members? Yeah, I, I think it's it's really easy to to say, hey, this person is an X generation. So I shouldn't use X in this specific <laughs> generation. <laughs> um, I should act a certain way. And I think we all have a certain amount of bias that we carry um, regardless. Um, but for me, it's about just getting a personal relationship with that person because that's going to sort of get a, get away from what the numbers might show and just be like, what is this person? What stage in their life are they at? Um, what do they care about? What are they passionate about? And then from that personal relationship, I can meet them where they are. So if they're, if they're ready to, to work super, super hard and they're ready to get that next promotion and they're going to drop everything to do everything it takes, like that's, you know, you're going to respond to that as a manager a different way than if someone says like nine to five, I got five kids, like I got a lot to do at home. This is really just to support my real passion, which is raising a family. Like that's going to result in a slightly different uh, way to uh, collaborate with them. But I, I think sort of going back to all these different technologies that we have to collaborate, it's I think it's true that the medium is the message, but also the message is the message. Like if if your if your communication skills are, if you're using a lot of jargon, if you're um, using ambiguous modifiers or just using unclear language like that's going to result in more issues than if you use uh, instant messaging tool versus a email <laughs> so I, I think it's like the best way to collaborate efficiently is to meet them where they are and yeah. try to be as clear and direct as possible yeah yeah well and I think in my own experience too understanding that you know at least my relationship with my team is different context mm -hmm. hey email is good for this context if it's not urgent you know send me a yeah. slack for this 
drop me an IM that I'm going to see on my phone if you need me right now and sort of, to your point, meeting people where they are, thinking about the context and having those individual relationships on, on what's important. Um, I'm going to shift a little bit to work styles, Mike, and do you happen to see maybe different work styles across uh, generations in the workplace, um, and how do they affect the way you work? Um, I think a couple of people on the panel have said they see more similarities than differences, and, and I um, completely agree with that, and I um, couldn't agree more with what Zach said about thinking about the person as a person and having empathy you know, for their situation. If you think about a person, there's lots of ways that you can sort of categorize them, you know, gender, ethnicity, their generation, um, you know, socio socioeconomic background, right? So no person is just one of those things. And so if you just hone in and say, well, mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with this person because they're a certain generation, you're going to miss a lot of, you know, who the, the, the person is. And, you know, on top of that, there are people who are, you know, really task oriented and there are other people who really like to talk and you know, understand the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I think having um, empathy and, uh, um, and, you know, really good listening skills and kind of understanding where the person's coming from, what, you know, their goals are really critical for you to be able to, to work well with them. But I do um, see uh, differences, you, you know, uh, uh, with m my uh, t two daughters, kind of watching them grow up through um, school and then go to work, um, lots of interruptions. And so learning to um, put those interruptions aside, I think um, there are a lot of studies that have shown if you're doing, you know, some sort of intense work like, um, you know, a uh, programming assignment or doing a design or thinking about a marketing um, tasks that you're working on, you need flow. And it takes the average person, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes to get into flow. And if you're letting yourself get interrupted, you know, constantly, you get through the day and you're like, wow, I just didn't get anything done. I feel like I'm going to have to stay, you know, um, tonight. And you hear all kinds of people who say, well, I get my best work done, you know, from five to eight or whatever. And I just think that's a bad habit to get into. It's really better to say, let me figure out how to set some of the interruptions aside, make sure that I'm managing my work and my schedule, not letting you know the interruptions manage me. And we don't do a good job, I think, in, uh, in school or in university teaching any, any sort of skills around work management. And so then it's really left to um, either the, um, you know, the organizations that people join or their peers to help them understand, you know, here's how you sort of manage what you need to get done in a day. Here's how you manage distractions and so forth. And it, it's really critical if you don't manage your work, you know, it, it ends it up managing you. you yeah, right? yeah. And so I, I think that's really important just to take some time to think about that. Yeah. And I think helping people understand, right, uh, you know, uh, this is the type of working I'm doing. This is I need I need some time. I need yeah. to be in that flow that you talked about. And then there are some times where you're in more intentionally saying I'm building those relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I'm doing some of that work. Shavette, let me let me ask you, maybe building on that. Um, are there. Um, do you think that your generation, or our generation in this case, <laughs> has, uh, you know, <laughs> together, the two of us, right, we get two, um, uh, ha has brought anything specific uh, or made a, a major contribution to, uh, you know, to the workplace and how we work together and, and sort of to the world of work? Yeah, I think so. I think because, well, we've been in the workforce for a long time. Um, we've certainly made our fair share of mistakes and we've had our successes as well. Um, and as a result of that, I think we bring a perspective that is backed by a lot of experience. Um, and, you know, nothing replaces experience, right? So I think bringing, so I'll give you an example. So, you know, I, I don't even think that originally I knew what my purpose was, but my purpose, as I figured out over the course of my career, is really about the experience, the holistic experience of all beings, right? Like that's really important to me. And that's that has been consistent across my entire career. And so <clears throat> even though I started in support and then I went into consulting and now I'm in product management and I've had um, uh, other types of roles, uh, I think about all of the experiences that I've had and I bring all of that mm. to the table. And so I can share that. So when I am working with my very multi-generational team, because I, I work with a, a team, every generation is in it, I, um, and 
but I can share that. So when, when somebody has an idea, which is almost always a fantastic idea, then I, I just share, if it's appropriate, that they might want to consider a certain thing because I can see downstream impact maybe more so than somebody in the younger generation. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we can't move forward. It just means it's a perspective, right? That is backed by a lot of <laughs> decades <laughs> of experience. Yeah. We won't ask particularly. We don't, do, we don't want to do the math for both of us here, my friend. Yeah, But important and so powerful. Zach talked about the importance of mentoring, the importance yeah. of sharing and getting experiences. And, and uh, you know, I think it maybe as our generation gets a little bit later and, yeah. and gets that sense of starting to give back. Uh, there's a really symbiotic relationship where we can Absolutely. say, listen, again, awesome, inspired by your energy and your ideas and your and your authentic uh, selves, and, and we can share some experiences to round out or to provide additional perspective is, exactly is a really right. cool, cool, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm going to sort of make the final sort of turn into a couple of additional questions here, but our, our good friends at the Great Place to Work Institute recently came out with uh, uh, their millennial survey. Uh, uh, they're the folks who do all of the uh, uh, analytics uh, for the Fortune's Best Places to Work and do just, just, just do some amazing research and have access to huge databases there. One of the interesting things that they uh, talk about in their new research is actually different expectations of leadership uh, across generation and uh, fascinating, you know, research. I think we'll probably uh, post that for people to uh, to take a look at. But it was interesting uh, when they asked uh, Gen uh, Gen Xers, "What are your expectations of leaders uh, and leadership?" They really talked about leadership in the context of work. So even still, not while I think we are experiencing getting greater context for bringing one's full uh, self to work. Um, interestingly enough, when they asked uh, millennial generation, what is most important for leaders to do for you? They actually said, being there for me as a whole person. Uh, not just rolling up our sleeves and supporting uh, with the work we do, but actually being there for when I have a crisis at home, when I need more flexibility, uh, other things that are happening. So, so we do see through some of the research, people's experiences, people's patterns, that there are some, some, different, uh, some different expectations uh, in the work. And so Grace, I'm gonna ask you, when you think about uh, what does leadership look like, what does it look like? What do you expect uh, for from the workplace to be a great place to work? We feel very grateful that many of our workmates feel the workday is a great place to work, but what do, what do you look for? Well, so I'm happy to start on this one. And I think from my experiences, I feel very lucky that I've been able to work at two companies so far that are really great places to work great and are really well known work. for that. <laughs> so I spent a few summers interning at Patagonia, and then I was able to land a job here at Workday, which is year after year ranked really highly and one of the greatest places to work. And so I think from, a, from my experiences, the commonalities between the two places I've worked so far, I've been able to see that they're um, these two organizations have really great company cultures as well as really strong company values and they were really work to uphold these and I think that really makes a difference too. And then on top of that, I was able to see that neither of these companies created a great place to work by accident. Mm. So I see that there's a lot of intentionality and purposefulness that goes into creating a great place to work. And I think about here at Workday, all the resource and opportunities that we have to get involved on campus to get involved in clubs and activities and just really create a really great space to work. and that. It's a lot of hard work that goes into that. Yeah. Well, both love uh, Patagonia's clothing and the company. Uh, we have good friends. They're they're one of our favorite companies, and also actually some not just similarities. Think about Yvonne Chouinard, amazing founder of, of Patagonia, very purpose driven, right, yes. to make the world a, a better place. Dave and Anil, yeah, uh, on sustainability, sustainability, yeah. and and really and really that outreach of, of 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 being able to support others. So we love love Patagonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been great. Mike, let me let me ask you: When you think about what is a great place to work uh, look like for you, what 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 do you think about? So, uh, um, I've thought a lot about this because you know I've kind of graduated to a point in my career where I spent a lot of time on um, mentoring and leadership training, mm -hmm. and the two skills that I um, think are most critical are um, you know listening and, and being empathetic. We have um, so <clears throat> many things that are bombarding us you know, every day that it gets harder and harder just to stop and, and listen. And there are so many situations where, you know, you come into the situation, you think I already know the answer. And then as you stop, if you listen, you figure out, I didn't even really know what was going on, right? And uh, one of my favorite things I learned, you know, early in my career was one of the seven habits. It says, you know, seek first to understand and then to be understood. 
and we're losing that skill. You know, yeah. we have we have everybody wanting to publish. You know, blogs and stories, and and um, it's harder and harder to to listen. And so, you know, we've talked about um, culture and values and so forth, and you know, having the whole person show up. But if you don't listen and understand, you know, that person's situation and sort of empathize with it, I think it's harder to. Um, do a good job in helping that person achieve the, the goals that they have. So for me, you know, having a culture of, of people really listening and understanding, you know, what's going on with their coworkers, that's that's critical for success. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of what Zach was saying, and meet, meeting people where yeah. they are, really understanding what, what's <coughs> what's true for you right now, what, what mm -hmm. are the things that we can do to help, you know, energize you. And not only that, can I just include... Um, Please. ...that I think that... Um, it's because we're able to bring our whole selves to work because we are, uh, you know, if, if we're listening, if we are understanding where people are coming from um, and <clears throat> we understand what they really enjoy, then people get to fully bring their gifts to work, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, it's one of the things that I see on my team as well is there are no cookie cutter <laughs> Any, you know, nobody in our team is cookie cutter. Everybody is exactly who they are. But what's cool about that is that there are things that I love doing and I get to do those things. And I may, I may not like doing certain other things, but somebody else really loves doing those things. And as a result, the entire team, the more diverse we are, the more different that we are, the more we think differently or that we like different things, we all get to contribute and create this amazing thing together, together where we yeah. all get to do the things that we most enjoy doing. What a gift, right? Yeah. That to me is a great place to work versus that hasn't always been my situation mm -hmm. in my work life. It's like you go to work and you do these <clears throat> these particular tasks or these things. It doesn't matter if you don't like it, you do it. Um, and that may still be true to some degree, but you can also balance that by using the gifts of your team and not just relying on, it may be a weakness of mine, but it may really be somebody else's gift. And right. so if we collaborate and we do things together, we have a better outcome. And work fundamentally moving toward much more team-based work, right? Again, Absolutely. I think back in our, you know, it's a, you sat there, you did your thing, and we now definitely see that given the collaborative intensity of work that working in teams uh, is increasingly, and exciting, exciting to compliment. That's exactly right. Yeah. Zach, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you, uh, what advice would you give to maybe peers in your generation as well as other generations for working collaboratively together? Yeah, I'll, I'll just echo what I said before, and that's like meet people where they are, right? If you if you go to, to where you're working relationships with empathy, try to understand a person holistically, sort of really get in their head, you can meet them where they are, and that's going to just ensure a much better collaboration. And I'll give you a second answer, even though you didn't ask this question, which is what advice would you give to managers in my generation? Okay, yes. Which would be to do all these things that we talked about, I think, and, and empathize, but I think in order to inspire other generations to do this, I think it's really important for people to be vulnerable in a management position. I mean, you're in a, inherently in a power position, and so the only way to set the right culture is to be vulnerable yourself, and I think that opens up for opens up everybody else to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, as you all know, we've gone so far as Workday as every <coughs> Friday is Feedback Friday. We actually uh, uh, pulse our entire company uh, uh, two to three questions so that our people leaders are, are understanding. And that was a very big vulnerable step by design to let people know, right, you're in this power position, but let me get feedback from my team. What can I do to meet each particular team, you know, where they are? And I, I can't tell you how many folks when we originally started that you know, were, were disappointed, uncomfortable. Yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I was going to say frustrated. I mean, I would be lying if I said there weren't a couple people who literally started to tear up and say, I just didn't know that, 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 that I wasn't doing the great job I thought I was doing. And so that has sort of started a cycle for us. Interestingly enough, just from a generational perspective, we actually get six of those questions are, uh, uh, are related to belonging. Uh, you were or earlier talking about, and we actually look by generation, by geography, by gender, uh, and by ethnic background. And uh, while we have opportunities across all of those areas, interestingly enough, at least at Workday, we find that the belonging index is the same across every generation. That uh, we don't see the differences that we might see in gender, generation, geography, or level. And so hopefully there are some things that we're doing well to for each generation to feel a consistent sense of uh, belonging. Always room for improvement, but... Yeah. Uh, 
So we maybe uh, move, move to sort of my final question and a bit of a wrap up for, for whoever would like to take this or maybe all of you. Um, we've been geeking out on this for a while today and, and in preparation on, on thinking about differences and similarities and really empathizing and having a sort of uh, uh, empathetic uh, view on how we think about generations. Can you share maybe what are some of the takeaways uh, uh, as we've been on this journey that you might share with our, uh, you know, with our audience? What are some things that, that maybe uh, insights or perspectives that really uh, 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 called out for you as, as we've been on this journey uh, today and, and leading up to today's panel? Who would like to, uh, who'd like to start? So, so I'll, I'll start. Uh, you know, one of the things that you get, and, and Chevette talked about this, the longer you're in the workforce is just more perspective. You see lots of things. And you actually recognize that um, there are patterns that sort of repeat themselves. And a lot of times we get caught up in the technology because it's new and cool and it's different than anything else that's ever been there. But if you've seen it, there are flavors of um, you know what's going on that kind of come in and go and come in and go. And um, the business problems are more um, steady, right? right? And so yeah. I think making sure that people recognize that there's the business problem you're trying to solve and there's the technology that you're going to apply to solve that. And the technology is going to... Um, it, it's going to evolve really quickly and the business problems aren't going to evolve as quickly and there's lots of um, good things in, in thinking about that your customers really are dealing mostly with business and yeah. so they look at technology as a way to be better at business not you know for the sake of technology and I think where we are sort of in the Silicon Valley a lot of times we um, like technology just for the sake of technology mm -hmm. but you're not going to have a sustainable business if you're not solving a, a problem and so I think really learning the business that you're in, understanding what customers are trying to do, um, listen to them, just like we were talking about empathy and listening you know, to employees, understanding what your customers want, what business problem are they trying to solve, and then what's the best technology to solve that. And two years from now, it'll be different. And five years from now, it'll be different. And 10 years from now, it'll be different. And recognizing that just keeps happening. And having that empathy, understanding, yeah. mm -hmm. meeting, really. And, and you've always shared some wonderful stories about that. Yeah, no, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Other thoughts, insights, stupiphanies, I like to call it, <laughs> you know, surprising and yet immediately obvious once we call it out? I, I'd say just having, sorry to mention. No, you're good. But, um, you know, just keeping an open mind yeah. is the most important thing I think that we can do um, is, is um, aim to listen, right? Aim, mm -hmm. aim to understand, right? Um, and that means each other, that means understanding our customers' needs, understanding the needs of our workmates, understanding what's going on in um, in our lives and- um, Your and, family. And, and Your family, family. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, is is probably the most important thing and if we, if we stop a beat and we listen, um, we're open to to receiving so much, yeah. as a result of that, we can be much more empathetic. We can um, we can connect um, where with people where they are. Um, and one thing that I I before we end this, I don't know if we're getting ready to end this, but one thing that I have to say that I just really really love about the you know younger generation. My grandmother used to always tell me she used to say, if you want to stay young, you have to hang around young people. <laughs> 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 and that has stuck with me for. Well, um, as certainly um, the moment I started feeling like I was inching up out of the youth um, <laughs> myself. But as a result, I feel like at Workday, we just do such a good job of that. Like just the fact that people come to work and they bring themselves. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and I was asking him why he doesn't take any PTO. And he said, why do I need to take PTO? All my friends are here and I have all the fun here. Why do I need to take vacation? And I thought, now that's, that's, if that's not a great place to work, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. No, so have great. fun. Yeah. Have yeah. fun. And enjoy the people you are. And, enjoy. And, connect and, and that increasingly, you know, especially as we look at some of the, the issues around the, lo the loneliness epidemic, that yeah. people increasingly where we might have in previous generations gone to other places to build that community, work is increasingly becoming the place that people can connect with, with, with other people. Absolutely. And is an increasingly important, you know, place for exactly that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, final insights or perspectives that you would want to 
I'm sure. a broken record. I'm okay. just going to keep right. saying, <laughs> meet people where they are, <laughs> try to have to die, try to listen, <laughs> everything that they say. Consistency, Zach. I love yeah. that. Stay I on brand. Stay on brand. Grace, I'll give you the last uh, the last word. Any insights or, or perspectives? Yeah, I'd love to add to just understanding that we're all bringing different and unique perspectives into the workforce yeah. and just being able to appreciate <clears> that. <throat> and then also just realizing that we can all learn from each other. And so I think it's a new opportunity for us to all, whatever generation you're in, to learn and grow from all the different generations we're able to work with. Well, I don't think we can get any better than that. So on that, we'll sort of, we'll end it. I want to thank my amazing panelists for being vulnerable, for sharing their perspectives, for, uh, you know, connecting and, 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 and sharing their stories and their perspectives. So much opportunity in our workplaces today to get different experiences, to get different, expect uh, you know, to be inspired, you know, by new ways uh, of working. And I want to also thank our virtual audience for joining us uh, today. We hope that you found this uh, uh, at least interesting, um, you know, so such an opportunity for all of us to do amazing work together. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about these topics or other topics uh, related to Workday Chat, feel free to you know visit uh, Workday.com and 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 connect with us there. And we just want to thank you for uh, for taking taking some time out, and want to wish uh, everyone online and my workmates. Uh, we hope you have a, a fantastic Workday. Thank Thanks you. so thank much. You. Thank you.